All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechach Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting the good fight of faith and truth. In sincerity and wholeheartedly, shalom to the Akwath, which is the women believers, shalom to you. I was sitting here thinking about, you know, how the scripture, his thoughts is not our thoughts, his ways is not our ways. Because I try to put myself in a mind state of an unbeliever, a scoffer, just for I basically exercising my mind to put myself in that mind state just to see what type of stuff, you know, because you're basically preparing yourself to combat scoffers because we are the defender of the gospel. And once you understand the truth. Matter of fact, let me get this. Let's start it off with this. Because. It says for in much wisdom is much grief. So, you know, the, the knowledge that the Lord have instilled in us. And guess what? The knowledge that we have is just a piece of it. But it's way more than the people that's in the world. And as the scripture says, the second address Five, I want to say 54 on down. It talks about how we get weaker through age. And, you know, the ones who was before us were stronger than, you know, the ones that's here today. So we're weaker in every aspect. And, you know, I just look at us in this weak capacity, you know, even even with the foods that we eat, all the, the poisons, the chemtrails that we breathe in, you know, we are at our lowest state. But the Lord, that's why when you get done preaching, it feel like you ran a marathon, man, because the spirit in this weak ass body. Hey, man, that's why um, the spirit can't be on you 24 seven. Plus, it's a humbling thing, too. But get back to the point is that for much wisdom is much grief. And, you know, the reason that is grief, because we understand that a man's goings is of the Lord. We understand that the Lord could have stopped at, uh, prevent. Adam and Eve from sinning, but that's not the will of the Lord. So that brings grief and he, that increase of knowledge, increase of sorrow. So the more that you continue to learn, the more you like, man, this is some bullshit, but see not the bullshit that a uh, unbeliever would say. It's just more like now we are waiting for our power to come. We understand when our power come, all our sorrows disappear, but see, we have to wait for it. Because it's not time yet. Or well, the Lord would have been saved us already. We got to go through the motions. Another thing which calls, you know, for much wisdom is much grief. And he the increase of knowledge, increase of sorrow. See, the Lord, he's not a liar. He's bound to his word. I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. So everything in this word have to come to pass. Then the end going to come. And Yahweh Shah said the best. All these things, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. So for a much wisdom, it's much grief. He the increase of knowledge, increase of sorrow. We understand that we still have to go through this process. But also John 8 and 32 the truth is what makes us free. We understand that there is an end to this thing, but we understand that, hey, because the scripture says a prudent man foreseeth the evil. We are able to see and we understand that we're at the end. And we also understand that, hey, it's still way more tribulations to come before that great and glorious kingdom. So all of that caused the grief and the, um, and sorrow, not the um, unbeliever sorrow and grief. Our grief and sorrow is different. See, we believe in the Lord. We trust in the Lord. Unbelievers don't understand the Lord. So everything that he do, everything that he do is offensive to them. Matthews 11 and 6, blessed see whosoever not offended in me. So let me get to. That was a little prelude to the lesson. 
because to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. See, in the movie of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, which Yahweh Shai is the star. In their movie, roles have to be played out. Processes have to be played out. Purposes is at the end of the process. See, the reason that people, you know, get offended at the Lord because the Lord don't sup with them. The Lord didn't give them the secrets, as it say in Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord would do nothing except he reveal of his secrets unto the servants, his, uh, his prophets. And um, also, you know, ooh, let me get this real quick and then come back. So the men of the Lord do know something. Just for your information, it said in your counsel, who have known except you give wisdom and sing your Holy Spirit from above. What did you have I say? I was I shall send you another comforter and shall abide for you forever. That was the Holy Spirit. John 14 and 16, John 14 and 26. The comforter. All right. Which is the spirit that gives you understanding of this book. Now, going back. People don't understand, like when you read down in this chapter, there's a time for death. There's a time for you to be alive. There's a time for hate. There's a time for love. There's a time for war. There's a time for peace. He has set everything against the other for that you can have understanding. Also appreciation of a thing. You can't appreciate the Lord. Here's the thing. If the Lord would have not allowed Adam and in this Adam as Adam and in <laughs> Adam and Eve to sin. Then you would have been immortal from the beginning. And if you are an immortal creature, which cannot die. Yes, you understand that the heavenly father, you know, he created you and all that, but you can't understand his power. You can't understand really who our father is about and our big brother is about. Without the fall. See, now you're able to receive mercy and understand it. Now you're able to understand the power of the Lord and how you need him and not the other way around without this process that we're going through right now. So, um, and this all, see, you got scriptures that I'll quote all the time, talks about how, you know, the contrite spirit. The sacrifices of the Lord is a broken heart and contrite spirit. How can you have those things without the process that we're going through right now? So say in the day of prosperity, be joyful. But in the day of adversity, consider. See how he set the one against the other. The most high also have set one over against the other to the end that men shall find nothing after him. That's the point. Now, so this is what made me start off with. I started um, off with. In the beginning of the video, say I try to put myself in a two third mindset, an unbelieving mindset, because I could see a scoffer saying, see, the Lord is just all about his ego. He's all he's egotistical. Well, you can actually say that he said that he hardened Pharaoh's heart. That his power could be declared in the earth. So just like right here. He set the one over against the other so that no man should find nothing after him. He is the preeminent one. He is the omnipotent one. All right. Yahweh Shah himself who walked the earth that was perfect. He said that there is none good but my father in heaven. So the father is the man. Yahweh Shah is the number two man. But we have to go through him to even get to the father. And Yahweh Shah is our savior. So. The point is, if that's like me, I created a robot, that robot that I created, all the functions and knowledge and understanding that he know come from me. But why would I make a robot on my level? Who in their right mind would make anything on their level? You created everything that you see, but then you're going to create somebody who got your capabilities. That don't make sense to me. So the Lord is going to get his just due and it's about to come sooner than what you think.
It is now high time to wake up out of sleep for your salvation is nearer than what you believe. The things that you see on these sci-fi movies about to come to reality. And I'm just going in the spirit, so hopefully um, whoever watched this is with me. So, you know, I sit here and meditate on these type of things because once you really understand this truth, it can offend you. But the Lord said this, and I, 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 I've been getting this scripture lately because it really hits home for me. Great peace have they. Remember, the scripture said, you should know the truth and the truth should make you free. That was keep the men of the Lord and the women who believe with great peace. See, when you're going through something, it ain't like the Lord didn't warn you. That's the test. It's called tough love. All right. That's why naturally when you have a son, you, you teach him tough love. You don't just give him everything. You have to work for it. The Lord making us work for it, man. Do you really love me? He said, when you come to the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. What is the temptation? The test. Temptations is test. And it's the testing of your faith every day. Why you got a wicked heart, why you got a wicked flesh. All the thoughts that come into your mind. These are the things that we got to go through. So great peace have they which love your law. The law is the whole book. Nothing shall offend them. Why? Because we receive the Holy Spirit. We have the understanding of all these things. So when you have a person come up to you talking shit against the Lord, all, I always say this to the person who want to scoff. Have you considered yourself? Have you looked at yourself and see how wicked you are and how insignificant you are and how, how needy you are? And you have the audacity to talk against the Lord like you know something. You came out of a nutsack like every one of us out of a birth canal, the woman vagina pushed out, wah, 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 you know, after nine months, or you could have been a preemie, and you came to an earth that already was created and everything else, else is just running its course. You ain't even have a say-so to be born. You ain't have a say-so who your parents gonna be, what you gonna look like, what your lot gonna be. And you got audacity to talk against the Lord. The shit pisses me off, but hey, this is the Lord's movie. So, what is that? This is the way, hey, this is the will of the Lord. Either you can get down or lay down, or you could be offended and get destroyed. And it said, because to every purpose, there is time in judgment. What is judgment? That's the action of making decisions. And it could be a good one or a bad one. All right? Time. Let's, let's, let's do a little example real quick for time and judgment. July 5th, 333 on a Monday, man got hit by a car and died. So the time, 333, July 5th on a Monday, the hit by a car is judgment. So to every purpose, there is time and judgment for every purpose. There is a time frame for something to happen. That's why the world, I just, I think I just made a video. I don't know if I posted it yet, but I just made a video talking about how the biggest stumbling block is people looking at the world and everything is still continuing as it was from the beginning. So when we talk about the truth and the, uh, Yahweh Shah coming back and the end of the world, you just like, oh, whatever, whatever you've been saying that because the world is still going on. But that's why I already quoted all these things have to come to pass and the end going to come. So it said, therefore, the misery of man is upgrade upon him. That's why people are offended. That's why people talk shit. That's why people, you know, fix their lips to say what they say. Because you're really, you're really upset. You're oppressed. You, you're mad about how your life is going, but you don't have no answers. And Proverbs 14 and 6 said that a scorner seek of knowledge and find it not. But knowledge is easy unto him to have understanding. All right. So you want to understand why life is the way that it is. But the Lord ain't supping with you. So what you do, you get offended and you talk shit. You don't know nothing. For he know of not that which shall be, because when you live in life, you don't know what a day going to bring forth. For who could tell him what it shall be? 
There is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Every man who stood, matter of fact, let's use a quick example. Every man who stared at the barrel of a gun and wanted to save his life, nothing he can do. He was in the power of that man with the gun. And guess what? You think the rich, let's talk about Esau Edom real quick. They've been running the world since the Renaissance era. So you think the Rothschilds, any of the Rothschilds ever wanted to die? If man is so in control and it ain't no power, why do we die? Why can we not stop it? Let's read this again. There is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. So when it's your time to go, it's your time to go. But all this technology and all this proud uh, uh, ness that men have, why can't you not stop yourself from dying? Neither have he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war, so you can't fight against it. When it's your time, it's your time. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given unto it. So you might be prospering right now. That's the will of the Lord. But you're going to have to pay for all your wickedness. The Lord said we all must come to the judgment seat. So it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of living power. But that's my thoughts. You know, everything have a purpose. And to, to reach the purpose, everything have a process. And right now, he raised up Esau, Edom. And he's at his height right now. He's about to bring forth his new world order. He's going to try. He's not going to accomplish it. As it says in Job 20 and 22, in the fullness of his sufficiency, he should be in straits. Every hand of the wicked should be upon him. So he's not going to be able to fulfill it all the way, but he's going to get close. And guess what? The whole world is going to be like, man, this is bad. What are we going to do? Where God at? And then God going to show up. All right. And even the ones who saying where God is. He going to show up not to your, um, not to your, um, they, what's the word I'm looking for? Come on now. Don't mess up. He's not basically, he's not going to come to your, um, to your call to save you because you got a lot of people who still believe in Jesus. You got a lot of people who believe in Allah. So these are the people that if they are alive in that time, are going to be like, where Allah is, where Jesus at, what the hell is going on? But Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to crack those clouds and deliver his elect. And you're going to see it, all right? And then after that, missiles going to fall. That's scripture. But the point is of this video is just to highlight how, you know, everything that happened, you are in the Lord's movie, all right? And this is the way that he wanted. He got his elect, he got his unbelieving children, and he got the heathen. Only the elect is going to be saved in the kingdom of heaven is for the Israelites, but the Lord is so fair, he said that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Esau, Edom, you're done, son. All right? So that's why I said rejoice, um, O daughter of Edom, in um, Lamentations 4.1. So all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, and Shalom.